everyone, it's Bevla here over at Crafting Chaos and today I'm going to show you how to use a stencil font to create a card that has a shaped edge cut out and I'll show you the sort of thing I mean from one that I've already created if I just click into my projects, I'm not going to make the same one again but you'll get the idea so this is um, one that I've created so what you get is that sort of shape into your card you can do the layers underneath if you want for different colours or I've in, you can include the, the pieces that you can cut individually and piece back in to the shape if you wish. So that's the kind of thing that we're aiming for. So we've seen these sort of dies that fit on the edge of a card and that's what I'm intending to make today. So I'm just going to leave that page because I want to go on to something else and I want to show you with a different file so basically I've gone onto the, the font website and I've chosen the font which is let me just remind myself of the name it's called HFF floral stencil so I'm going to type that in HFF floral stencil and then it'll come up and what you get is this font here and there's lots of different flowers that are available and if we look at the actual go back to there you can see that it's a free to use font and if you wish you can actually donate some money to the author if you wanted to so if you're going to use the font a lot it, it is um, polite if possible and you can afford it to do that so basically You'll download it and you'll import it into your um, Canvas software. So what we're going to do now is in my font book, I'm going to look for a flower that I think will look nice. And I'm actually looking for, if I show you on here, this one, this day's ahead. So I'm just looking for that because that's the one I fancied doing for a card so I'm thinking I might as well use that so I'm just going to work out what it is and it's an uppercase J so in brother type converter I'm going to type an uppercase J and whilst the HFF floral stencil font is selected I've got it on the maximum size and I'm going to preview it and you can see that's what it's looking like I'm going to close that and then I'm going to save it and I'm going to call it Daisy Head because I've already got a Daisy. I'm going to save it in my SFCM files and then I'm good to bring it into Canvas. So I'm going to my Canvas software. I'm opening a new page. This time I'm going to click on SVG because it is an SVG file that I want and it's the Daisy Head FCM. So I'm going to say OK and bring it onto the mat. For some reason Canvas does seem to be running a little bit slowly today so please be patient. And there we have it. So I'm just going to select it, bring it into the centre of the mat and I'm going to resize it. Now I want my card to fit on one of those sort of, um, what do they call them now, a DL type card. So that would be eight inches by eight inches because it's it's eight inches tall by four inches wide so i'm going to do it the flower eight inches tall which will make it tall maintain the aspect ratio and say okay now that's actually made the flower four inches wide so i'm going to just shrink it down a little bit this way and it will skew the shape of the flower a little bit but I'm not too concerned about that because it's still quite a pretty flower and I'm going to edit and I think I'm going to have it facing the opposite way maybe or maybe not I'm going to undo that so I'm going to go with it as it is so that's what we're looking like now so I'm going to take a duplicate of it and then I'm going to edit and ungroup our duplicate no I'm going to undo that. I'm going to stick that off to the side for now. I'm going to leave it grouped, but I'll ungroup it later. So now, <clears throat> what I want to do is go on Edit, Create an Offset, and I'm going to make it quite, leave it quite big and leave it at 0.2 inches and say OK. 
Now this looks like a bit crazy, but that's what we're looking for. So I'm then going to select everything that's there and I'm going to weld it, which should give me a matting layer for... Okay, so something's not quite overlapping. So if you get something that's not quite welding, you can always remove some of the parts if you need to. So I'm just... Oh, not that one. Just going to try it again now, edit and weld. And there we've got it. So these circles were the ones that were stopping it. So you can usually spot them. And the last few that I've tried, I've done that and not had to do that. Now, reason I'm going in here, I'll just explain that again, fit to mark. I can see there's going to be a problematic bit there because it's not one path all the way around. So I'm going to deal with that now by zooming into that area. Then on the selection tool, I'm going to double click to expose the nodes, drag around the modes that I want to get rid of and they'll turn turquoise and then hit minus and that will remove the nodes. Then I'm going to go on view, fit to mat and I click off and there we've got that matting layer for that but it's a little bit on the broad side. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to edit, now I'm going to create an offset but this time I'm going to go I'm going to leave it at 0.2, but I, oops, 0.2, but I'm going to go inward. And that should make it the exact size of the daisy that we've already got. So now we're getting somewhere. Now I want that, I want to create now an offset that's outward by about half of that. So we're going to go 0.12 and have a look at that. Say OK. And that's where we're at now. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. I'm going to move that into position. And you can see, hopefully, if I get it positioned right, that that's per provided a perfect matting layer for our daisy flower. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going, sorry, I'm going to bring on a basic shape now. So what I need to bring on is a, is a square. I'm going to untick the aspect ratio and I'm going to make it 8 by 4 okay so I want it 8 inches tall by 4 inches wide now obviously because we've created that offset from here that was 8 to start with and this is slightly bigger so what we're going to do now is collect select those two together line them up centrally on the vertical and the horizontal axes I'm going to edit and group them and then I'm going to make it 8 inches high and hit enter so it resizes everything accordingly. Then I'm going to edit and ungroup them and take the outline away from the other one. I think I am going to flip it. just going to see which way I prefer it and I do think I prefer it this way so I'm going to maybe not let's have another go and just decide which way because you whichever way you decide to do it's going to work it just depends on the way you want to do it i am going to flip it so i'm going to st stay like so i'm going to line it up with the other piece of the card and i'm going to select both and line them up at the bottom edge like so okay so each one of these i've done has worked out differently so um, it'll work out fine for you. So I'm just going to weld those two together. And if it doesn't weld, you can just move it across a little bit. Now, again, as I can see that we're going to have a problematic area. If you get any of these little islands, if you will, I like to call them, that look like they might be a bit problematic in cutting, just zoom in and then using the selection tool, double click to expose the nodes, drag around the ones that you want to get rid of and then hit minus. So I'm just going to repeat that there, hit minus, and for the last few, select and hit minus. Okay, then I'm going to view, fit to mat, click off, and I'm just going to test this. Oh, I need to flip the flower, otherwise it's never going to fit. So I'm going to bring that in and test it in position. And I think that's looking okay. Now at this point, before I go any further, I am going to duplicate that shape. 
so that I've got it to refer to as a reference. Okay, and also for if you want it for individual paper, paper piece in parts. So now I'm going to adjust this using my keyboard until I'm happy with the position of the offset line. So just move it about until you're happy that it's where you want it to be. Now I think that's in the perfect position to where I've got that. So making sure that the bigger part, the card part, is at the back and the flower is on top. So we need to make sure that the flower is on top. Then we're going to select both, edit, process the overlap and subtract. And that's going to punch out that flower. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flood that with colour so you can see what we've actually achieved. So I'm going to make it, um, what colour shall we have it? I'm going to go with this pale yellowy colour so you can see. So that's the, what your base card would look like but obviously it's not finished at this stage. At the minute it's 8 inches high but it's only 6.08 inches wide. So I'm going to make the card wider now and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I'm just going to get my workspace so that I can see the other applications that I need. So at the moment I've got it 8 inches long and 6.08 inches wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in 8 and I'm going to take away 6.08. You could do this in your head if you wanted but I'm just making it easy for people that perhaps maths isn't the strongest subject. So that any, it's, it's um, possible for anyone to do. So now I'm going to bring on another square and I'm going to make it 8 inches high but I need to make it what did we say 1.92 inches wide to make that one. Now if it's 1.92 I need to add about 0.03 so that I've got that weld overlap. So if we're going 1.92 I'm actually going to put in 1.95 and see how we are at that. So I'm going to say OK and we've created that piece there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select both of these shapes, align them at the top like so and then I'm just going to click off and I'm going to select the first one and I'm going to shunt it away until I can see daylight between and it might help if you zoom in to see what you're doing with this. So you can see when you're actually overlapping. Then using my arrow keys I'm going to start shifting it across until it's just overlapping. When I think it might be overlapped I'm going to go view fit to mat and I'm going to draw a box around everything apart from this bit here and I'm going to try to weld. And if it doesn't weld, it means that I've just not got it far enough overlapped, but actually I've done it perfect this time. And you can see now it's 8.02. So by the time you've actually taken into account the crease, that's going to be almost perfect because you're within 0 0.02 of being 8 by 8. So what I'm going to do is again flood it with colour so you can see where we're up to. And what I'm going to do next is bring on a rectangle and I'm going to make it 8 just going to make the whole screen bigger again now because I don't need the calculator. I'm going to make it 8 by 4, like so. So now that's exactly 8 by 4. So I'm going to select both shapes and I'm going to line them up to the top and also to the left. So that that line there, even though there's a big chunk missing here, I know that it's exactly in the middle. But before I do anything else, I'm going to select the piece behind and I'm going to hit duplicate so that I can, I'll show you what we're going to do with that later. So I'm going to select the middle one and I'm going to double click to expose the nodes. I'm going to carefully click that node and hit minus and then I'm going to hit, I want to get this one and again hit minus, oh wrong one, so double click to expose the nodes and it must be this one that we need, something gone wrong there. Double click to expose the note. I'm just going to take it back. So I'll start that bit again. So I'm going to double click to expose the nodes. 
and it's better if you get this one hit minus and then this one hit minus and then click on the um, icon that zooms in and that will automatically select that line so you're not trying to grab it because that can be problematic because it's so fine then I'm going to hit the make it a cutting line and a perforating line and I'm going to hit before I do anything else I'm going to click on the selection tool so that when I go to the mat to select both shapes it's not going to zoom in any further and then I can group them so now I've got that score line grouped to our um, <clears throat> line if you will so what I'm going to do now is I want a matting layer for underneath so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to create an offset line and I'm just going to make it slightly bigger for now okay I'm going to do the same thing now but then I'm going to take it back down again edit create an offset line so I'm going to take it inward like so and I take the smaller of the two and I can delete that one now and this one now should be exactly the same size as the one underneath and that one's just a spare so I'm just going to keep that to the side in case I need it it's always a good idea to keep hold of your your files until you're absolutely sure you don't need them copies of what you're working with so all I'm going to do now is cut this one short so that I've got the matting layers for behind I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to go edit and remove the overlap this one so we're left with that because that will fit there now what we're going to do with this is we're going to send it to the back we're going to change the colour so we can see what we're doing and I'm just going to make it lilac so it's easy to see now if it feels like it's still too a bit big I'm just going to line it up to the top with the yellow one so edit line up to the top and then I'm going to move it in I'm going to click on it and I'm going to move it in see what we're looking like and if it's looking like it's a little bit too big we can just do we can bring it back out again and we're going to make it an inward offset line again so go on the offset we want to go very narrow so as narrow as we can inward and say okay and then we're going to make sure we've got the smaller one delete that one and we're going to put this one behind and we should have a little bit of leeway now so edit behind like so and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring on a shape which will allow me to cut that in that piece that's underneath in half or somewhat in half shall we say it's not exactly in half and the shape that I'm going to use is a oval shape so I'm just going to rotate the oval and what I'm trying to do is get the shape cut so that we're going to be able to have a green part and a coloured part for the daisy so that if you don't want to do all the paper piecing and put all the individual bits back in you don't have to and so what I'm going to do is I'm, I've got that bit exposed now so I'm okay there but what I need to do now is try to get up and round this stalk area here so I'm going to zoom right in so we can see what we're working with and I'm just going to make that one a little bit narrower so we've got a bit of leeway there and then I'm going to click on my selection tool and double click to expose the nodes and between this one here I'm going to add another node and then I'm going to select this node here no this one because it's sent between those two that I want to add a node so that we've got the nodes I'm going to hide the selection point so that it's easy to see what we're doing and I'm going to add another node there so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this node up and this one across. So what I'm actually doing is trying to fit this line in between. Now, I'm going to add another node there so I can just bring that, this one down a little bit. And I think we're almost there. I'm just going to do one more node there so that I can adjust this one slightly so that I know it's not going 
in between. Okay, so now I'm going to view fit to mat. So all I've done is created a shape, and if I move this one out of the way, it looks a bit weird, I know, but we're going to select, not, not this one, we don't want that selected, we just want these selected, and then we're going to go edit, and we're going to break it apart, divide. So that's going to, we're going to select both, and we're going to edit and divide them, like so. And then I'm just going to move this one out of the way. I'm going to move this one out of the way. And these two, I want to weld back together. So I'm going to weld those two back together. Because that's our bit that's going to make the green part here. And this bit is the bit that's going to make the coloured bit for the daisy. So you'll see what I mean now when I colour it in. So if we make our daisy a lovely kind of orangey colour. And our leaves, we obviously want them green. So I'm going to select a nice green. So now if I send those two shapes to the back, so I send that to the back and send the green one to the back. And then if we line up the orange one behind the daisy, you can see that we've got that. Then we line the green one up behind the leaf, we've got the leaf. And we just need to adjust that just ever so slightly. So, I mean, obviously, when you're doing this, you'll be sticking it on. And that'll give you a perfect thing. So now you've got that paper piece file. So we can delete these. And I'm going to just select everything and move it into the place position on the mat. I'm going to select our spare daisy. Because what you can do, if you wanted to, is you could... I'll explain it in a minute, but we're just going to rotate that for 90 degrees for now so I can fit it at the bottom of my file so that we're well onto the mat now what you can do if you want is if we bring on another shape a square a rectangle rather so I just need to get this properties box out of the way while I find it like so and again, if we make it 8 inches tall, so we need to make it 8 inches tall and about 5 inches wide, and we'll try it at that. So if we then wanted to, we can cut... but we just need to get rid of the holes so to do that I'm going to edit and I'm going to create an offset first of all outward by 0.4 and say OK then I'm going to remove that and then delete the one underneath and now I'm going to create an, out, an offset again but this time by 0.4 and I'm going to go inward and say OK so now we should be back to the same size as, just delete this one. We should be back to the same size as what this one is, and we are. So now we can bring in our 8 by 5 Just going to make it slightly taller than 8 because all I'm going to do is use it just to cut this. So we need to work out roughly where. So I need it to be... Try it, let's just see if we can bring it across. So I want it to be far enough over so it's not interfering with the score line, but not too far that we're going to miss the leaf. So I'm going to now select both, edit, process the overlap and remove the overlap. Oh, edit, undo. If it does that, just means that your rectangle wasn't on top. So you need to make sure it is on top. And again then, remove the overlap. And if we move it in, if it's not, if it's too big, which it is still a bit too big, so we can go smaller. But it's easier just to... So again, remove the overlap. So now will that do? Yep. So we've got... That can fit behind. So as a matting layer underneath, if you will. So you could put that... Cut that 
we'll just bring this to the top I'll show you what I mean and then it's easier to see I'm, I wouldn't do a card one of these so you'll get the idea anyway but just so you can get an idea of what's what I'm just going to change the colour of that to white so imagine that you've got your card cut out now this part, this part and you put your white piece underneath so it mats on nicely and obviously you'll be sticking that down and then what you can do then is I'm just going to rotate that back minus 90 so it's back straight up let it undo and we need to go 90 0, try that there we go so we're going to go we've got it the right orientation so we know the flowers are going to fit and if we ungroup it this is how you would do it then you'll cut this out to different colors and say you've made the petals yellow but a, a sort of really bright yeah change the base card and then it'll be obvious um change the base card to more of a buff color we've got the white one underneath so if we made the petals a really bright yellow cut them in bright yellow card and the center in say orange <coughs> like so and then the leaves in green cut the leaves then what you could do is you can actually need to make sure the bits on top so you're going to see where it's going you can actually sit they'll fit perfectly back inside the holes that you've just made because they're from the same flower so you could actually now mat these back in oops let it undo what i've done now is forgot to bring it to the top but obviously yours will be actual real pieces so you're not going to make that mistake once they cut it out you can actually just fit them back in to the holes that they came out of and the leaf again well i'm not going to do it all just so you get the idea and then you can paper piece all the pieces back in and have a multicolored flower if you wish but if you don't feel like you want to do all of the paper piecing what you do is use this template cut just the green just the orange put that behind and then to, 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 so your working doesn't show you'd stick that on top behind your other colors so it looks nice and neat from behind so that's just another way of doing it so I'm just going to edit undo all those little bits so that they all go back into where the flower is So as you can see, this could be quite a versatile flower. I'm just going to group those again so that I can rotate them. So I want to get everything to fit on my mat so that it's able to download without it telling me that I've got something extending beyond the mat. Oops, we just rotated that by accident. So I'm just going to select the buff layer, select it over, and you can see how that would be a much easier paper piecing job to do than doing all the individual pieces it just depends on how much work you want to put in but that would be almost a card completed um, I'll just leave that matting layer there and I'll change it so you can see it on when you download the file make it a mint green so I don't need that now I can delete it so there you've got a few different options and basically that's your card done you could make yourself a, a, a greeting that extends over this side a little bit because you've got a bit of leeway so you could cut yourself a matting layer and you know flower you know if friends were flowers i'd pick you that kind of thing would be a nice sentiment for this one but as you can see um there's a lot of these dies available to cut out the you make your shaped cards but I just thought well as long as you've got the actual free stencils and there's lots of different flowers you could choose in there that would work exactly the same way then you could make your own stencils and your own size cards whether it be a DL or a 8x8 or whatever card you prefer to make um, obviously if you want to make an 8x8 you need a, a 12x24 inch mat but it's doable so that's it for this tutorial i hope you've enjoyed it and learned a lot from it um, if you take it slowly step by step and it's the process that i'm trying to get across here 
that once you've actually done this with one flower you should be able to make it with lots of other flowers so I'm just going to save this as daisy now so that I don't lose my work and I'll show you so I'm going to save that one and I'll just show you another example so you'll get what I mean so I did a similar thing with a tulip and all I did was just look for a free tulip um, stencil file and I made this sort of layer if you will that you could make into a card very simple so to just add another layer on here like I showed you in the previous example and that's where we're up to so obviously that moves off there's your backing layers just undo that so it lines it back up nicely again so again a nice easy way it looks like you've done a lot of put a lot of effort into paper piecing but what you've actually done is just cut the piece to fit underneath like so all right so that's it for now i haven't forgot the um shark card i am getting on to that one that's going to be one of my next things that i'll be filming and then it's i'll be moving on to christmas so i hope you've enjoyed it thanks for watching and don't forget to like share and subscribe and tell your friends where to find me thank you bye